As the year 2023 comes to an end, a look at the political landscape of Africa shows just how active and interesting the continent has been and possibly what to expect in the coming year. In this special report, New Central's Bernard Akere takes us through some of the political events that took place in Africa in 2023. Spanning West, Central, North and Southern Africa, the eight presidential elections in the continent this year comprised some of the most populous countries on the continent. However, while some countries were either replacing or reinstating their governments democratically, there were those who had their governments toppled by military coups. Following a robust campaign period, Nigeria kicked off the continent's electoral calendar in February with an election that for the first time since 1999 had three top contestants, the third of which gave hope to the country's enormous youthful population. The election, which many found several faults in, was eventually won by the candidate of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who was later sworn in on May 29th. His victory will eventually be questioned by the other two main opposition candidates and challenged in court. However, Tinubu still went ahead to win all court cases. Next to go to the polls was Sierra Leone. General elections were held on 24th June 2023 to elect the president and members of parliament. The election was largely contested between the incumbent president, Julius Madabayo, and major opposition, Samura Kamara. Bayo eventually won the election with 56.17% of the votes, while Kamara gathered 41.16 votes. The election itself was conducted largely peacefully, according to observers from the Commonwealth of Nations, but the European election observers stated that there were statistical inconsistencies in the presidential results published, with the European Union Election Observation Mission calling for the Election Commission to publish disaggregated results data per polling stations to allow for public scrutiny of the results. Responding to this, Sierra Leone's Chief Election Commissioner said it will take time to upload and disaggregate results to the internet. On 26 July 2023, a coup d'etat occurred in Niger during which the country's presidential guard removed and detained President Mohamed Bazoum. Subsequently, General Abdurrahmani Chiani, the commander of the presidential guard, proclaimed himself the leader of the military junta and established the National Council for the Safeguard of the Homeland after confirming the success of the coup. In response to this development, ECOWAS issued an ultimatum on 30 July, giving the coup leaders in Niger one week to reinstate Bazoum with the threat of international sanctions and potential use of force. When the deadline of the ultimatum expired on 6 August, no military intervention was initiated. However, on 10 August, ECOWAS took the step of activating its standby forces. To Central Africa, where general elections were held in Gabon on 26 August, Incumbent President Ali Bongo ran for re-election representing the Gabonese Democratic Party which had ruled the country continuously since its independence from France in 1960, including 41 years under Bongo's father, Omar. The national electoral body announced on Wednesday, 30th August, that the President Ali Bongo Ondimbia, already in office for 14 years, won re-election for a third term with 64.2% of the votes. But it was a series of events that followed in the coming days that took the world by surprise. Ce jour, 30 août 2023, nous. On August 30, the armed forces of Gabon launched a pre-dawn takeover shortly after the announcement that incumbent president Ali Bongo had won the general elections held on 26 August. The coup brought an end to the 56-year-long rule of the Bongo family over Gabon. The Liberian presidential election can be said to be one of the most interesting elections on the continent in the year 2023. Incumbent president and football legend George Weah was eligible for a second term. 
No presidential candidate won a majority in the first round, with Weir narrowly placing first over opposition leader Joseph Boakai, who served as vice president under former President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. The result meant both candidates advanced to a runoff held on the 14th of November 2023. Boakai defeated Weir by just over one percentage point in the closest runoff in Liberia's history, and Weir conceded the election defeat peacefully. European Union observers described the runoff as remarkably close and well-administered, while ECOWAS and the United States congratulated Liberia on the largely peaceful election. The only North African country to go to the polls in 2023 was Egypt between 10th and 12th December, and some say the result of the election was never in doubt. In an election that saw an unprecedented 66.8% voter turnout, according to election authorities, incumbent President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi secured a third term as leader of the Middle East's most populous nation. In a landslide victory, Sisi won 89.6% of the votes in an election set around the time when Egypt is dealing with various crises, including the Israel-Hamas war in neighboring Gaza and the country's worst ever economic crisis. Sisi is now set to serve his third and, according to constitution, final term in office starting in April. And drawing the curtains on Africa's 2023 political year was the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. President Felix Tshisekedi is running for a second term in office against a backdrop of years of economic growth, but little job creation and soaring inflation. The election was marked by massive delay nationwide, with the Electoral Commission still attempting to deliver materials to voting stations long after polls were meant to have opened. As at the time this report was compiled, the result of the election had not been officially announced. As far as politics is concerned, 2023 will be a year to remember for many African countries. The hope is that the lessons learned from the political activities in 2023 will positively shape the decisions and policy making of 2024. Bernard Akede, reporting for News Central.